Hi, welcome to ADI Technical Training. I'm Matthew. Today I'm in the technical lab at our UK hub in Chatterton, Manchester. Let's get started. In episode 4 of the Access Control Basics, we're looking at locking. This video is a compilation of our three popular videos on locking. Um, the first one being how to select between fail safe and fail secure for its application. Then I'm going to discuss um, locks and locking devices. And then finally mag locks. Selecting the right mag lock and the brackets to go with it. Okay, hope you enjoy. We're going to cover the difference between fail safe and fail secure lock releases. So. What is the difference between a fail safe or a fail secure lock release? Fail secure. A fail secure lock release will stay secure or locked when the power fails, keeping the door secure. With no power, the release is locked. Fail safe. A fail safe lock release will unlock when the power is removed or fails, making it safe to open the door or escape. With no power, the release is free to open. Failsafe lock releases are typically 12 or 24 volts DC. Fail secure releases are 12 or 24 volts AC or DC. In this short video, we're going to discuss locks. Rim night latch. The rim night latch or Yale lock is a very popular lock in the UK. It sits rim on the door. It's also automatic. When you close the door, it will lock by itself. Typically, to exit, you twist the thumb turn on the inside and pull the door towards you. Or to get in, you use a key. You twist the key and it lets you in. Suitable electric strikes are called rim or surface releases. The selection of strikes is small for rim releases. Mortis latches. Much like the rim release, it's automatic. You close the door, it locks behind you. The difference between the mortise latch and a rim night latch is that the latch sits inside the door, making it mortise. There are many, many brands of electric release for mortise latches. From the typical Euro style or economy as we call them, to the ANSI style. You have options such as dual voltage, 12 or 24 volts AC or DC. And some are site selectable, fail safe or fail secure. Mortis sash lock. A mortis sash lock has a latch at the top and a dead bolt at the bottom. Typically you would use a latch as a normal mortis latch as previously mentioned. And then at certain times where you want to stop people using access control to gain entry, you could dead bolt it. The selection of releases for sash locks is much the same as mortise latches. However, you do need to get a mortise sash lock faceplate for I'm the selected release. I'm going to be talking release. about mag locks. I'm going to be talking about how you select what brackets you need for a typical timber or aluminium door. And we're going to be talking about how you assemble the brackets, how you put the brackets together to make them fit on the door. At ADI, we do many types of magnet. Whether it's a slimline 300 kilogram magnet or a standard 500 kg, whether it's internal or external, we do quite a lot. Along with the magnets as well, we do the brackets, the L brackets or the Z and L brackets. As I mentioned, we're going to discuss how you select the right brackets for the doors you're using. Let's have a look at the typical Z and L kit. So when you when you unbox it, you'll find you get three parts. You get the L bracket, the large um, piece standing up there, and then you get two L brackets, which are the same sort of size. And when they're put together, they make a Z bracket, they make a Z shape. I'll show you a bit more in a moment. The uh, a mag lock is made of two parts. You have the electromagnet itself, and that's the device you put power into. And then you have the flat plate, which bolts to the door, screws to the door. And that flat plate is called an armature. The mag lock is fixed to the L bracket and the armature is fixed to the Z bracket. 
once you've decided which brand of magnet you want, which size, whether it's 300 kgs or 500, 300 for most internal doors, 500 for perimeter doors, where security is more important than controlling uh, visitors on an internal door, for instance. Once you've got your magnet, how do you know? Do I need ZNL brackets? Well, it's quite simple, really. You need to establish have you got an inward opening door or an outward opening door. To decide which, whether you need brackets or not, you always need to stand on the outside of the door, on the unsecure side, and have a look at that door. Is that door inward opening or outward opening? If you're stood on the outside of the door, and for instance your reader or your keypad is on the outside of that door, does the door open towards you or away from you? If that door opens towards you, it's outward opening. If the door opens away from you, it's inward opening. Before we get onto the brackets, let's have a quick look at the maglock so you can understand what I'm talking about, brackets and header plates. So here we have a typical slimline mag, a W box one in this instance. There's um, three components that make a maglock up. There is the maglock itself, the main body, then the armature plate, the part that fits on the door, and the standard with all slumline and standard mags, you get what's called the, the header plate. A header plate is detachable from the magnet and you fix that to the head of the door. So it hangs below the door. And you fix that to the, the frame with the screws that are provided and the maglock bolts to that plate. So when the magnet is fitted to the door, if you were to look at it from the outside, you see the magnet hanging down. That means for a typical outward opening timber or aluminium door, you don't need any extra brackets because the header bracket that comes with the maglock is suitable uh, for that outward opening door. That leaves us with an inward opening door. On a inward opening door, you do need a Z and L bracket. The Z bracket is made of two L-shaped pieces and they bolt together. And once you bolt them together, they, they form a Z shape. With the Z bracket assembled, we now put that onto the top of the door. It goes on the inside of the door, on the secure side of the door, and you screw it to the top of the door. And you can see here on my drawing, the, the door is shut and the Z bracket is at the top of the door. Next, we need to put the armature plate. We need to bolt that to that Z bracket. The Z bracket comes with the bolt so you can bolt it together. With the Z bracket assembled and the armature mounted, next we need to put the L bracket and we mount that to the frame at the top of the door facing outwards towards the Z bracket. And now the magnet itself, the maglock, fits inside that, that L shape. The magnet on the bottom has two fixing screws. You tighten those screws up into the L shape. And there we go, the magnet is now mounted in the L bracket. With regards to an outward opening door, I showed you how the magnet fix, fixes to the door frame with the header bracket. Here's a little plan, a looking down plan at the fitting itself and you can see in the picture there in the drawing we have a picture of the door the frame and in the middle is the armature the armature actually bolts through the uh, through the door in some instances you can't bolt that armature plate through the door you can't run that bolt through the door maybe it's going on a, a fire blanket door and you want to keep the blanket intact or perhaps a decorative door and people don't want to see the bolt on the opposite side of the door. So what you can get is a, an armature housing. All brands do them. Um, the armature housing simply screws to the door. It screws, it's a flat plate you screw to the door and the armature sits inside that pocket. It's a very easy way to fit a, an armature to a door as well. And that's a quick guide to selecting um, brackets for doors and selecting the right magnets. Installers rely on ADI. The ADI projects and technical teams offer a pre-configuration service. Any project size from a single device or to a complex system. Any IP device can be configured from our central hub using our technical and project teams. Having your device pre-configured will save engineers time on site. 
We can set your IP address, the gateways, and in addition, we'll make sure your device has the latest firmware on board. Simply get in touch with your ADI sales contact or email the project team. Thanks very much for watching. All the products mentioned in this training video can be found on our website. Links are below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much.